Origin Clear is a company that focuses on wastewater treatment. And hello, everyone. And welcome to the Water's New Gold CEO Briefing. Our mission is to transform the water industry. Decentralization offers us this opportunity. The plan that you've built here is super impressive. The world is experiencing a crisis in regards to water. It's a great opportunity that you are giving us investors. The decentralization of water treatment means that we no longer need to establish giant water treatment plants. Let them fight over the 20%. Let's work with the 80% that's untreated. Over 21,000 unique alternative investments. Three million jobs in the U.S. alone. Making it easy for the regular investor. All the old trends just accelerated. Lucrative and fulfilling. The vision I've got is to standardize these products. Design, build, own, and operate. We have 65 people in the room. We got an important message to share to the world. We can put a guy on the moon, but our water is horrible. Recycling all that water, it's a huge impact for the environment. Bringing new infrastructure in to drive growth in America. That's a critical part of the picture. It's a twin 125 gallon per minute RO system. I don't think we're talking about a $10 million fund. We're talking about a series of $10 million. Yeah, the opportunity itself is very big. Um, to live, yes. Take care of the water. Not too many CEOs do a weekly briefing and are willing to talk to individual investors. Wanted to welcome everyone to this um, briefing. It's going to be amazing. Uh, so much fun. And I've got a ton of people here. So welcome aboard. June 30th, 2022, briefing 167. And our new positioning is as a clean water innovation hub. And you will see that shortly. Hey, Robert Baxter, how you doing? All right. Good afternoon. And we are going to cover our latest strategic presentation on the 28th of June. And um, I open with this because this is what is staring everyone in the face, which is massive interest rate hikes, which are leading to a decoupling of the entire real estate marketplace and really unknown effects all around. So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about a new thing called generational royalties on productive water assets. But let's first take a look at the existing assets. Real estate, as I was just mentioning, is extraordinarily vulnerable and it's, it's, um, it has feet of clay, which is everything is debt in real estate. Precious metals, they're fine. They're kind of not doing anything. Everyone should have them. But there's no income. It's not a great way to build a portfolio. Com commodities are high priced, but what's weird is now they're starting to drop because of demand destruction as we as we move into the stagflation. So as the economy slows down, lumber, for example, is down sixty percent, and so uh, that's not a. I'm I I was in commodities. I got out completely. Stock market same way. I'm in cash. Why? Because it is completely overheated and it is dependent upon Fed interest rates being close, zero or close to it, and that's going to be over for a little while. Bitcoin, oh my God. Well, a lot of people who went deep into Bitcoin are getting margin calls or just- they're, they're, We're hurting. We're hurting. Hurting for sure. Uh, and on top of it, the exchanges themselves are potentially you know, going to take your money away. It's not a pretty picture. Exchanges are very convenient, but they're also dangerous. Now, water, meanwhile, for a century, clean water was a government monopoly. Uh, we've always considered like the money just comes from the government, gets treated by the government, and it's assisted by large companies that do the work for the government. Um, that's changing. Why? Well, there's a growing need for water independence, which I will discuss further. But what does that mean? Number one, infrastructure, the very government infrastructure we've been talking about is currently running $75 billion a year behind. And the last remedy, which is the vast $1.2 trillion Biden administration bill, only allocated $55 billion total for water, which is not even a year's catch up. So that's a pretty sad situation. It's not going to get any better. Now, people are becoming increasingly aware because of uh, COVID and um, supply chain issues and so forth, very aware of that things can be shut down any day. They're being warned, so cyber attacks could shut down the internet, all kinds of things can happen. And so people are hyper aware of that what they took for granted is no longer so. Now, there's also uh, has been a migration megatrend from the 
mega cities, two secondary cities. I'm talking about you know places like Charlotte, Tampa, uh, Austin, and this has been accelerated by COVID. Uh, very interesting trend and. The corollary is that attractive land is often off the grid. So, for example, we're seeing in Georgia, um, our own company is getting a lot of business from Georgia, which is trying to catch up with people moving to the Atlanta region from other places and having to try and catch up. These are municipal players. They're trying very hard, but they're not keeping up. Okay. Our innovation is private water. We see a problem of skyrocketing water and sewage rates. This is before for the current inflation. Think about it. This is you know coming up to 2020, pre-COVID. It's gotten so, so much worse. People believe that water rates are regulated. They are not. They're kind of invisible. Uh, you know, my wife has a very small tutoring operation in an 850 square foot building, and she shares $125 a month minimum charge for water and sewer service. There's no getting out of it no matter if she uses no water at all. So a lot of hidden costs in water. Businesses want to take these costs in-house, especially in places like Northern California. They're getting just destroyed increasingly, but they're not in the water business. They don't have capital for water treatment, and they certainly don't have the experts. The solution then is to turn water into a fully outsourced service. Our version is water on demand. Now, meanwhile, big water is behind this trend. They're still focused on a, you know, becoming big, bigger and bigger fish in a smaller and smaller pond, um, which is still billions, many, many billions, but they have to kind of stick with their model because going decentralized, going to the, the edges is a different kind of beast. They're not, you know, $50 million projects, they're million dollar projects, totally different way to operate. And these uh, companies are not set up for it. American Water Works has a billion dollar a year acquisition budget alone just to acquire companies. So that's kind of their game. And unfortunately, that's really in the past. People still make water systems the way they build houses, you know, dig concrete in the ground, the whole thing. Technology adoption is hyper slow. Um, we found this out a few years ago when we were proposing an amazing new technology, but um, we learned that the horizon for adoption is ridiculously long. And we run into this all the time. Ken and I, we get proposed people, I got a great technology and so forth. Yeah. They Thanks. just need, they just need um, some traction and they don't have it, but they're wonderful. They just don't have traction. Meanwhile, again, this business sector needs the funding that is not going to them through bonds or whatever. And that's where Main Street investors can now participate in very much the same way as petroleum and solar, which is what we call water like an oil well. All right, now we're building what we call a fast scaling network. What is that? First of all, businesses just sign a, on a dotted line and get water treated and managed on the meter. No capital required, that's it. 15 year contract typically is normal with, with uh, price indexing. We delegate it all to a regional company. That way we're not trying to build a huge water company, which is gonna take another 25 years. Instead, we simply tap the existing water uh, company infrastructure, uh, the local water companies, wherever they are. And we also plan to license our own amazing uh, prefabricated modular water systems technology to standardize the fleet. And finally, we are contract managers, which means we don't want a lot of technology risk. We stick with what is proven. We found that something new is always something that loses money, and that is not our plan here. We just want to implement standard, reliable solutions, of which there are plenty. All right, let's take a quick look at how the flowchart works. Initially, investors invest in this water demand subsidiary, which is kind of like, think of it like, a, like these master limited partnerships in energy, very similar, a basket of, of uh, properties. And sure enough, this subsidiary then inks a direct contract with the customer with built-in price indexing. Now that contract is very important and it belongs to that subsidiary, which then commissions a system with a contract designer and builder that does the standard job with reuse and the whole thing. And that system is connected to the cloud, permitting 
operation and maintenance and managing and billing of, of charges to the customer who then pays and shares go back to investors and partners. Full loop is closed, everybody wins, and that is a smooth process that is, all the pieces are in place today. Now, one solution for four challenges. First thing is, of course, meet the customer's water needs. The second one, contractual limits to rising water costs for customers, very important. This is key and it's getting worse. Investors are protected through real assets, with real cash flows, and their own inflation indexing that permits them to keep up with inflation, but also the customers don't have unlimited risk. It's, a, it's the best of a bad situation, but that's what people are looking for. And finally, the, these clients, these companies, these water, the water companies, consulting engineers, all get their projects funded, and there are many of them. All right, let's take a quick look at comp competition. There's really two large categories. One is the existing legacy companies, which you see on the right. They do very little what we call waters of service or also in the water industry term, design, build, own, operate, the BOO. Let's look on the left-hand side because this is, these are truer competitors. Let's take a look at who they are. Seven Seas Water is um, actually, they own the water as a service trademark. And, um, but they specialize in very large whole island desalination projects as opposed to much smaller stuff. They do it on the meter, but they're basically replacing the municipality for that island economy. Cambrian is in that small scale solutions, which actually, when you think about it, comprise the bulk of the marketplace because sheer numbers. So they do much like us in terms of small scale, um, but they do not outsource the work. They do all the work themselves, which I believe limits them in terms of uh, expansion. And they get all of their funding if you look at the bottom there, they are not direct investor enabled. They get their money from VCs. Fluence, great company, not really small scale. They're big guys. Um, they'll do all their own work again. They are modular. And again, they do not work with direct investors. So Water Demand is the only one that is uh, working with the bulk of the uh, future business that is delegating all of the execution to an operating part of network, which is kind of our supercharger network creating a barrier to entry for other people trying to get in the space. They'll try to move in and sure enough, they'll find out, oh no, we work with water on demand, which is great. Of course, we handle all phases of water treatment, clean water, dirty water, and water reuse. We have the modular technology, six patents that we have master licensing to. Of course, we're connected to the cloud. And most important of all, we are bringing this as an asset investment to the investors of America and eventually the world. We have a killer app. We, this, we ran into this uh, over the last couple of years where all of a sudden um, segments that we, I call uh, human communities, uh, really these are uh, communities that are forced to make sure that they have their own water um, self-sufficiency, like housing developments, like trailer parks, um, motorhome campgrounds, uh, freeway travel stops, hotels. We already have a number of customers already in these areas who are paying. What we're going to do with this is simply putting the icing on the cake by adding water on demand to accelerate the adoption, make it simpler. So it's a full acceleration. All right, full picture here. Very important that all of the needs are fully outsourced. So therefore, these clients do not have to worry about the details of water treatment. So it's even more important than not, than not having to come up with the capital is to not have to manage a whole new cost center. Secondly, there's this interesting self-sufficient water for human communities uh, concept and growing asset portfolio. Why? Because we do not sell these systems. We keep them in our ownership and therefore our investors' ownership and creating a growing asset base. Long-term investment returns for the investors, ultimately because these systems, even though individual contracts might go 15, 20 years, the actual equipment can last up to 100 years and so you get a very long-term return on investment. Our chief engineer, Dan Early, has been a early pioneer in decentralized water systems. He, did, he was doing it before it was a thing, 20 years ago. Today, it's, it's all the rage, and he is being recognized as a, a guru of the space. We are planning to list on the NASDAQ from our current penny stock uh, location. And finally, we are all about eventually packaging the uh, money streams 
using the blockchain to streamline them and potentially create marketplaces. So this is a complete vision of the future. Now let's take a look at Origin Clear's evolving role. First, a look at what we've been. We've been a company that keeps packing more and more value and more and more value, more and more value. As a result, constantly raising money to do more, do more, do more. Um, and while that resulted in a lot of value, it also resulted in a kind of a focus like, what the heck are you guys? And you're always raising just enough to do the next thing, but not enough to make everything succeed. So we looked at that and we realized a better model is to actually do the job of incubating uh, you, because crowdfunding has become mature enough that you can build entire companies with this, um, for example, Regulation A, the very amazing um, success story of Nightscope on Start Engine, which raised $110 million using unaccredited investor uh, rounds and is on the NASDAQ. So that is a mature way to use wide public marketing and not to be hostage to the endless due diligence of the you know, PE funds or whatever, just go ahead and raise the money. And that's very smart. The second thing to point out is these are single ventures and I'll, and I'll discuss that further. So in terms of rollouts, we're focusing on water demand with the Water For Us initiative. Next year, we're looking at doing dollar H2O, which is our, uh, our trademark for um, the packaging of dividends into a water coin ultimately creating a, an asset-based um, package that could be traded eventually, creating a world marketplace for the very first time in water. Now, you notice this, this strange term, Averamod. Uh, we're, we're basically looking, Averamod is the brand name for our line of pump stations, which is about the most boring thing on the planet. Literally, pump stations move water from one lay level to another level higher. Uh, pump stations are clean water, lift stations are dirty water, and we've got a growing business in pump stations with national accounts growing. Why? Because ours are super durable. The million plus pump stations in America are all falling apart, and we are now replacing the entire installed base. We're the preferred choice for so many customers today. So we decided to pull it out, make it a new business unit, and eventually spin it off as its own thing. The year after that, the parent modular water, which Averamont came out of, we plan to take that out to, um, to the, uh, through the crowdfunding process. And finally, good old progressive water treatment, which has built uh, custom systems for very large customers and managing cities and so forth, so many good things, and has its own uh, intellectual property base will eventually uh, go out. That's five properties. And then going forward, more incubations. So Origin Clear is kind of is going to kind of be in the permanent launch pad mode. So I've just discussed that. One and man launched H2O, Veramod, Module Water Systems, Progressive. What are we? Well, we're we're a change agent. We're this 14-year small, you know, scrappy small public company that somehow survived. And our investor base is there's, there's none better. Um, I remember when Ken Berenger came on board in 2018. And went to work talking to those customers, and he was blown away by the fact that these customers, despite having waited a long time, were strong loyalists and believed in our vision. And since then, we've done the right thing by them, and they continue to do the right thing by us. We have proven that we can raise money from the retail accredited investor. Why is that important? Retail accredited investors can be reached with marketing. They can be pitched one-on-one. -on -one. They don't have a three-month due diligence for you. And they don't sell their shares. Very few of our credit investors are, se are sellers. They hold. They are true believers, the longtime holders. And um, we have justified their faith by making sure they did not cr get crammed down as long as they stuck with us. Our production facilities have a sterling reputation, really amazing. And uh, as a result, their business is growing. Obviously, we know how to roll out new ventures. 2018, for example, we launched a modular water systems, which just in May had a month of purchase orders that was as much as the entire year of 2021. That was a venture we launched in 2018. And finally, in 2022, is really starting to move fast. Notice how long it takes. This is the water industry. But once you hit that inflection point and you start, you know, get the hockey stick, it really takes off. And that's what we're seeing. We have experience in various areas which are critical to being a launchpad. 
All right. So we're the mothership, which means we provide all the centralized services. And that way, the business units can stay specialized on what they do. And this is smart because it provides revenue for the mothership, but it also means that all the best practices are kept in one place and shared, and the businesses can just do what they do best. The Origin Clear investors benefit from our having a major stake, the largest stake, we believe, in each one of these spinoffs going forward. It's kind of like how Yahoo was saved by having a large share of Alibaba. Um, they fell apart, but their ownership of Alibaba really saved the investors. So Origin Clear will multiply its value over time as these launches occur. Now, this is important. Separation of ventures means that if one of them doesn't do well, let's say the pump stations fall apart, nothing much happens, they kind of sit around, do nothing, no big deal. This is very similar to what happened with Microsoft, where they, they failed with Microsoft money, they failed with the Microsoft phone, they failed with a whole range of things. But that was okay, because these business units were independent and didn't drag down the rest. And so they were able to just be exert a Darwinian uh, selection and move on. And even today, they have very good successes, OneDrive, um, Teams. There's a number of things that have worked well, but we forget that they've had a lot of failures and yet they have succeeded. So that's very, very important for us as a launch pad. And finally, we do plan to invest in the NASDAQ ourselves because the water industry needs an incubator. There really is none. Uh, it's sort of right now the incubation is if if you're a, if you start a water company and 30 years later you're still alive, then you'll get bought up by a big guy. That's the incubation process. It's kind of lame. So with that in mind, we're kind of like uh, the industry success on Silicon Valley, which is why Combinator. I'm showing you there what happened in uh, with Airbnb. They only made 440 thousand percent on their investment. We actually plan to cover more of the waterfront and to go all the way into more of the rounds. But we, we own that beginning, that super profitable beginning, and then continue on up from there. So that is really what we're about. So our personal incubation is complete. We are, um, we've launched Water Demand, Water Like an All Well, where for the first time ever, everyday investors can earn generational royalties from private water systems. It's modeled on the oil and gas MLP space, which was launched in 1981, is today a 300 billion plus marketplace, very viable, and everyday investors can invest in it. No more massive central systems. This is the future, smaller endpoint water treatment, businesses doing their own water treatment. And by the way, saving water by reusing the water, which unfortunately the central utilities never do. And we now have initial funding in place for the first commercial pilot program. All right, let's quickly take a look at the team. Um, myself, I have a background from the dot-com being a disruptive marketer and having kind of learned on the battlefield of the dot-com, the year 2000 crash and going forward. Long before that, I was a ship captain and um, had my share of adventures in uh, the Atlantic and Pacific. Um, and that, I think, is a good mix to be able to react to the unexpected. Ken Barringer, of course, is not only the co-creator of Water Demand, but he helped design the uh, Dollar H2 a water coin concept, which is in our future. He has brought us an amazing amount of banking and uh, Salesforce training experience. And um, he continues to know exactly, well, he's very adaptive. And I think that's the main thing to know about Ken is that he knows how to Roll with the punches, which you better know how to do in the finance world today. Andrea D'Agostini showed that he was able to grow a very large company, American Power and Gas, which has done an amazing job of building a franchise. And he is working on doing the same thing here. Tom Marchesello came out of the Air Force Space Command, um, worked in product marketing, went on the buy side in the investment banking space, and also worked with the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange on Bitcoin, actually, back in 2015, believe it or not. So he's been around for a while, and that's where I met him, actually, was in the crypto space. With him is Dan Early, our chief engineer, who um, is really a guru in the area of uh, structurally reinforced thermoplastics, basically very, very tough polyethylene systems. And he is, not only is he a great engineer, 
but he's well aware of the need to communicate the value of what is done. Um, because engineers kind of like, they, they kind of let, you know, good, good work speak for themselves, but he's great at communication. We appreciate that. Uh, Prasad Tare joined us about a year ago, and uh, he has really brought world-class uh, audit experience and financial management to us, which is well needed and will be part of our NASDAQ path. Mark Stevens is the longtime president of the company we, we acquired in 2015, which has just an amazing reputation. Now let's take a look quickly at our historical performance for the existing operating units and going forward. Looking at aggressive water, we see starting in 2019 through 2021, roughly, if you combine the green and the blue, roughly a $4 million a year run rate, pretty static, really, a million dollars a quarter. That changed in 2021. Things really took off. We had a tripling of orders in 21, which are today driving a 50% increase in revenue. Remember that orders turn into revenue over a long period of time. Why? Because you, it's just like building houses. You got to build the water systems and it takes months and years. Uh, we, you know, Progressive Water closed a $5 million deal in August with a large utility in the Southwest. And that is going to take about two years to fully deliver. And um, that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. But it's great because it builds a huge backlog of paid business. You also notice in 2022, we are planning to separate Veramod from Modular Water Systems because they're starting to grow national accounts. And so it's, and what's great about Modular Water is it's been doing these numbers, uh, you know, a million dollars in 2021. This is revenue expected at a million five or more in 2022. I think that's conservative. Partly because we've broken out the Veramod part, which otherwise would have made it more like 20, you know, 2.2 million. But the point I'm making is there's only four people in marginal water. So it's a very efficient operation. And their odor growth in 2022 is going to continue to drive the growth of both the pump station business and the modular systems business. And you see that in the next slide here, where a history of zero or, or slightly negative gross profits turned into very strong gross profit numbers last year, uh, adding up to over a million dollars in, in total. And that trend will be continuing going forward. So very nice uh, look at the business. And this is, these, are the, these are the businesses that already do work for us today. All right. Now let's take a look at the consolidation of everything, including the new, starting with, of course, water on demand. Now, the growth of water on demand is driven by A, the amount of capital raised and B, how many machines we can put into service, remembering that we have to select the projects and select the partners. Fortunately, we have a, an operating partner in place. We have the capital. We have an excellent general manager who is, um, who's managed very large, high-end projects in the past. And we are currently uh, qualifying multiple candidates for the first commercial pilot. As you can see, uh, water on demand Starts negative, of course, because that's where we're spending money. But then it starts to make some serious money. And look at this. It's making uh, top line about 90 million, of which almost half is operating profit. Why? Because it's pure finance, right? This water hardware is low margin, but water financing, if done right, is very nice margin. And out of that, 25% goes to the investors. And you notice that the investors represent about 10% of the gross. So the royalties are 25% in their profits. And it looks like from the pro formas that they will be about 10% of the gross, which is a very nice picture. Um, water demand is uh, really the gorilla for all this. As you can see, um, you, the, all the other units being rolled out only add about $30 million to the total in, in 2026. Um, they're essential. Why? Because they uh, provide a lot of technology value add, and they, they simply are a different kind of business, so they have a nice blend. But as you can see, 2022 and 2023, we continue to have losses, but they dwindle, and, be, and we're looking at profitability, operating profitability in 2024. Now, by the way, I might say that Origin Clear itself, the mothership, does not plan to have uh, fundraising. It will not need it. Why? Because A, it's got profitable businesses, as you saw. And B, it gets from the businesses it exports or launches, it gets management fees. That combination ultimately will lead to 
are not having to raise money for Origin Clear itself and simply raising money for the individual um, uh, ventures, which is very healthy. Okay, let's take a quick look at the offering then. The forecast, again, is 90 million over, four, over five years, ending up with about 400 systems. That's our uh, plan based on a model with sort of blend of machines, um, water usage fees, which include inflation, so that there are there is value. We're not being excessive, but at the same time, we're giving good return on capital. And of course, this all depends on the availability of capital. The and the first chunk really is is twenty million dollars with the goal of a three hundred million dollar total, which we will discuss further. Where where is this all going? Well, the majority of it is going to fund these capitalized water systems, and the rest of it goes to build out infrastructure. Remember that if we're delegating work to water companies, well, we better make sure that they succeed. Otherwise, guess what? Money doesn't come in from the customer. So it's very, very important to be good at uh, enforcement, contract management, project management, really being on top of performance and applying remedies, effective remedies to make sure the customer wins and therefore we do too. Okay, let's take a look at what the offering looks like. Investors currently in this new offering get a 25% long-term royalty on the totality of what they invested. So let's say they invest $100,000, they get 25% of the net profits from that $100,000 being invested in water on demand, pay per gallon. Additionally, they get 10% of the new company, the private company, uh, only, but they only the first $20 million in investments get to share this. And by the way, we're down to only $17 million left. That is dilution protected. So as Water on Demand Inc. moves forward and eventually becomes a public company, that 10% will remain 10%. That's super important. Um, now, because it's so early, we're still you know, getting our first pilot underway and so forth, we are sweetening the pot in a big way by giving investors preferred stock that is um, stock that is protected from price uh, drops because you only you convert at the price at the later price whatever it is technically 150 percent of your investment actually it's 165 percent for a short time which means that you invest hundred thousand dollars you immediately get stock worth 165 thousand dollars and you get double warrants means two more opportunities to buy at the same price um, with a strike price of 25 cents which is very good for your upside. So to summarize, basically you make far more than your, your investment and then you have long-term opportunities both from uh, royalty income as well as uh, a piece of the new company. This is summarized here, which I won't go into, but it's basically um, covers the investing benefits. You are founders today. This situation will not last. That 165% goes to 150% and all the way down to 100% over time. There's also an escalation for multi-million dollar investors getting more percentage. So we do favor large investors, but right now we're doing a fine job for accredited investors who are taking the leap today and they're getting that 165% is what normally a $5 million investment would get you. And we're this is because this is the moment before the pilot starts, I strongly recommend that investors look at this as being a very strong 15% bump on top of the existing 150, which, which itself will go down. Okay, sure enough, that 165% will expire soon. There is a cap on conversions, which is very useful. We need that no matter how high the stock price goes, you, you will not get fewer and fewer shares if you, if you wait to convert because there's a maximum price. This is very useful, but by the way, that cap will rise also. The founding share is again limited. Uh, it's close to $3 million already allocated today. And we would like you to simply go to originclear.com, click invest for full the full information and to schedule a personalized briefing with the very amazing Ken Berenger, or you can simply go to oc.gold slash call Ken or call him. Either way, join us and invest in the new asset class, water. And I'd like to thank you for joining us. And here is a, a regulation D disclaimer, which spells out the uh, parameters of the investment. And we look forward to your questions and to working with you 
in the long term. So, you know, we still want to work with the enthusiasts. We don't want people who are highly conservative and want to talk for eight months about the two. Da, da, da. No, we want people who are really early adopters and excited about making a difference, but we're able to put more depth into the conversation. And I think that's very beneficial. Um, it's really working. And I, I'm glad that everybody can hear me. If a lot of people are commenting and thank you for your patience. All right. There's a small segment here before we get to the, the, uh, the conversation with Ken. Um, and this is about why it's time for a new asset class because of hidden inflation. Take a look at this. You remember we showed the water rates in that video, which you know basically get to about triple of inflation. Kind of ridiculous, right? Um, well, let's take a look at how it's been updated since then. This is uh, an update that takes us all the way up to about, looks like about um, May, April, May, something like that. Uh, and March 2022, that's where it goes. So you can see the different categories, hospital services being the worst, college, medical services, and on down. Hourly wages rising, but not fast enough. Um, and you see the food and beverage really in late 2020 kind of kicking up. Let's take a look at it right there. See, this is to late 2020. It's kind of going up like this. And then it kicks up. To, this is the current inflation we're seeing, right? It pops up. And um, after late 2020, this is the phenomenon we're seeing. And it's not really, you know, hourly wages are not really catching up. Notice how new vehicles popped. These are all things that you're aware of, right? Uh, other categories like TVs, well, <laughs> TVs are getting cheaper and cheaper. But um, unfortunately, you can't eat a TV. Let's take a look then. Uh, I overlaid the previous graph onto this one starting in 2009. Uh, there it is, using that same trend from before. And then here's where it kicks up. Watch this. Boom. If we're tracking with what it was doing with food, this is where it's going. So now this um, really creates a hidden inflation. Nobody's really tracking water rates. Why? It's governmental. And so um, we have a, a problem here, which is that people are suffering from water rates and sewage rates. Um, for example, in Los Angeles, there's people in LA that have a $15,000 a month water bill because they have a bit of land. And they suffer. Is how it is. Obviously, if they have $15,000 a month bill, they have a decent uh, setup, but still it's kind of ridiculous. So that uh, kind of um, brings us up to speed. And I thought you'd find that very, very interesting. And so water sewage inflation is a hidden tax worse than food. And with that, I'd like to bring the amazing Ken Berenger into the room. You're on, my friend. Can you hear me? I'm just making sure my mic works. Okay, very good. Let me, uh, okay, very good. You know, it's funny. I, I just looked at that graph. I, I did a quick screenshot while you were doing it because that's um, that's powerful stuff. When, when you look at how how rapidly uh, water and sewer rates are, are are rising compared, you know, you don't ask people. People complain about the cost of, of meat, but you don't go, "Well, how's your water and sewer rates?" You know, they don't really. It's not something. No. It kind of, it's kind of a background pain. Um, but if it, you know, here's the thing. And, and you mentioned the H2O token, and we'll, we'll get into that at a later date, but tying that to pay streams, creating a secondary market, creating a way to hedge. Water rate, water rate risk for high water users as a business is almost as dangerous as fuel rate risk is for airlines. And airlines can hedge against it, but other businesses that use massive amounts of water can't. And it could literally be, it, it, could, it could kill your business. Charles Walker says, my area's rates are really rising significantly. So people are aware of this. Absolutely. Um, Gene Tully says, I think you have your shit together. And it's an amazing investment opportunity. With well, Thank you, you, Gene Tully. Uh, he's asking, how's your PA sub doing? I, oh, oh, that's the, the subdivision. The, yes. Um, so I'm doing a little work. I'm doing a little bit of due diligence. You know, the, the mortgage on the property just went up like two thousand, <laughs> two thousand dollars a month. And in fact, I'm calculating how long it's going to take. To do, so it's like three years at two thousand bucks a month. Um, you know, I, I'm uh, so I'm, I'm I'm still still very bullish. I'm probably going to do it. I'm just. Um, 
But it's only going to get worse, right? So I'm going to take that. some money out of my crypto uh, account too. Oh, your, your crypto gains. And That's I looked and I looked and I said, but I had money in there. I had a lot of money in there. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, and look, I, I'm experiencing, and we, I laughed with a couple of investors because, you know, I said, so, you know, are you depending on your crypto? Are you depending on your, your stocks right now? To, and, and, you know, they, we kind of all grumble universally. And I go, look, you really can't even go to cash. I'm mean, going to cash is like the alternative, but even with cash, you're still probably giving up 20% a year, which is better than the 90% I gave up in crypto. Uh, Gene says you'll make your money not to worry. So take yes. that, to that, my friend. I'll make my money. Yes. No, but it's it's it, because you know it's a fantastic concept of this self-sustaining uh, development, fifty-acre yeah. development. Yep. With energy, water, and even you know, we even had a little victory garden there. You know, right. World War II that that would uh, potentially it's have a luxury agrarian community. It's okay. it's kind of the same concept as glamping, glamour camping, right? Yeah. <laughs> Only, you there. There. Only you live there. Only you live. People forget that agrarian is means getting up at five a.m. to do stuff. People well, no, someone does that because it's luxury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luxury agrarian community means you live there and hire somebody to get up at five a.m. There you go. Well, and the idea is to not not have the um, the, the the cattle or the chickens. Anyway, we're, and we're to getting self sustaining and to be self sustaining. Well, of course, you have to be self sustaining. With that, I wanted to uh, just say that that it feels to me. I was I was watching the the presentation. It feels like things are just kind of settling in, and like yes. the whole thing is yeah, the, the the ship has landed. We've kind yeah. of resolved all the burning questions, yep. um, you know, and and uh, kind of all the pieces are starting to just how we got here. It's kind of almost like they are the, the origin story, if you will, right? Um, and and that presentation is so wonderful and it's so utilitarian. We really didn't even lean in on the fact that we're creating the world's first asset class that's going to be wrapped and accelerated by a fintech, right? Like we didn't even we didn't even go there. Right. Yeah. The word fintech has not been inserted in this presentation, which I will do, Ken. I, I wasn't suggest. I, I wasn't. Was that, <laughs> was that a reminder? You're so funny. That's like you my know, wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Honey, do. Well, anyway. Yeah. Um, and yeah, read what you saw and says, Gene. Well, anyway, it's been great looking at that. Fascinating about that graph extrapolation. I think we'll, um, we'll work with that some more. And um, listen, it's, Coming on the heels of the visit to London, where we really learned that people are excited, and we really decided to, however, to stay focused on enthusiasts. We want to work with people who are personally invested in the concept, want to make a difference. It doesn't matter how much they invest, it's that they are there. I've talked about the importance of retail accredited investors being super loyal, being yeah. you know enthusiasts, and, and that's really been the strength of the company. So. I want to thank everyone who is an investor in this group because I know a lot of you are regulars, uh, and that we will continue to uh, appreciate you. Uh, and then, as we go forward, we're going to bring in more people um, who will uh, at, keep adding to this amazing movement that we're creating. I, I want to share. Remember what I shared with you today in our meeting, Briggs, when I said, you know, London, the big money already understands what's going on. But they still have that, you know, they still have that cool detachment. I mean, they really love the idea of doing beneficial investments that they actually make money on. But there's that still cool detachment. The experience I had over the last two to three days when I spoke with individual investors, you know, um, VC, family office money, um, they, they're, they're great people to work with. But it's kind of like, well, of course, you're bringing this to us, right? Like, in other words, you know, don't you know who we are? Mm -hmm. um, but the individual investors that I spoke with this weekend, I won't name their names, but they know who they were because they remember it was like two days ago. Every one of them had an excitement and, and, and they were like, you know what? Thank you for, first of all, taking, you know, 50 minutes to kind of lay it out the way you did. You took about 40 minutes to do that. Thank you, thank you for taking the time to really explain this and drill down for me. But also, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are, are offering this to guys like us, you know what I mean? To, you know, they, they basically, to, you know, to kind of the regular, you know, more affluent, but not institutional investor, right? Because they don't get those deals. They just don't. 
Well, and it was this a discussion we had a while ago about we don't want you know water as an asset to be owned by one Jeff Bezos, but to split Jeff Bezos into ten thousand investors yeah. is still a lot of money, right? Yes. yes. Tom La- Tom Leaco says thank you, and uh, we're going to wrap it up because it's almost an hour, and I try yes. these things sound yes. so loquacious, loquacious. What a cool word, huh? Or Talking verbose, or verbose. verbose. Yes, we, we, we can go there. We love, we love the sound of our own voice, uh, which is a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Thank you all. 